Search for a home on any device, anytime, anywhere. Private property, a home for everyone. Good afternoon and welcome to Winner Home and Afternoon Express, proudly brought to you by Private Property. My name is Danilo Aquisto and you're in exactly the right place. Don't worry, this is not a repeat. Now, due to the cricket, our schedule has changed somewhat and I hope you didn't feel too sad without your favourite interior design reality competition last week. But here we are now and ready to continue on this adventure. Now, because it's been a while since we last saw each other, let's take a look at what's happened with the kitchen design so far. Previously on Winner Home, the design duos were served exciting news. What happens if I told you I'm giving you 20,000 Rand for your next challenge? I'm so excited that I fall off my chair. The design duos got fired up for the challenge, but two cooks in the kitchen might disagree over design choices. Did we paint already? Yeah. With black. Charcoal. They're screaming over. Some have to make do with leftovers. Considering that you spend all your budget, is there nothing that we can make or do? He's opposed to do it yourself. Yes. <laughs> and too much spice could push the design too far. We've thought it out and we've reeled ourselves in, mm. but had a little bit of razzle and dazzle. Yes. Not too much. No more <laughs> chandeliers. Oh, Amanda, but just one. <laughs> <laughs> Hoping to entice the most sophisticated palettes, our design duos aim to cook up kitchens that'll leave the judges asking for more. Now excuse the panel with the kitchens in the half-baked state when we last saw them. Time is definitely of the essence and our design duos have to add the final sprinkles of style with mere hours left in the challenge. It's the final day and it's the very last hours and our kitchen pendant is still not up only because it took forever to find the perfect light for the kitchen. And we had to buy it off the shelf. Literally in store, they had to take it down, which is something they never usually do. Yes, we just like taking it. <laughs> like, take it, it is the last one, because we need to have that light. All our design duos have made use of Caesar stone in their kitchens. And Megan and Gerard stopped by to ensure excellent quality workmanship of the installations. So we've arrived at Team Habitat's kitchen because I wanted to bring in the experts just to make sure that everything is going according to plan. And what's fascinated me every single time I walk into these homes, Gerard, is that they've used this product in such versatile ways. Now with Caesar Stone being the Rolls Royce of the engineered material in the industry, um, you're almost limitless with the amount of stuff you can do with the material. As we've seen with a win home competition, I mean, we've done the countertops, floating vanities, wall cladding, shower cladding, floating shelving, Ladders, tail rails, I mean, you name it, we can basically do it. We know it's versatile, but it's also so different. I mean, every different home has used a different style and colour. They have. This has actually been the perfect showcase of our new colours. Each team has used a different colour in their kitchen. So we've got Team Visi, who's used the rugged concrete, which has that raw, rugged feel. It's honed in, in its finish, which looks amazing with the monochromatic theme. But then you look at Team House and Leisure, they've got the Mont Blanc. They've got these beautiful wood-finished cupboards, which bring in a raw, natural accent, which bring out the Mont Blanc. And then you've got the Moorland Fog here with Team Habitat. It's got a beautiful polished finish, but there's so much more in our ranges from textures to colors. There's really anything you need for your home. We know it's an incredibly beautiful product and aesthetically pleasing, but it's also adding value to the homes that it's installed in. How does it do that? Well, apart from it being the highest quality surface you can find, it comes with a lifetime warranty. So just like the bricks in the wall, the roof over your head, the Caesar Stone surface is here to stay and you're never going to have to worry about it again. So you and your family have peace of mind at the end of the day. And Gerard, are the architects and the interior designers demanding this product? We get inquiries daily from architects about Caesar Stone. So definitely it's, a, it's an in-demand product. With a lifetime warranty, the installation is also vital. Do you guys have a way of monitoring or ensuring that quality? installation. Absolutely, it's not just about the material, it's about how it gets installed and by who. So like Herat from Natural Stone Design, we've got an accredited fabricators program and we rec highly, highly recommend that when you do buy your Caesar Stone, you use a Caesar Stone accredited fabricator to install it. So that you know your lifetime
lifetime warranty will in fact last a lifetime. It's beautiful, it's high quality and it's versatile and it adds value to the home like it has to Team Habitat's home. And if you want to call this yours, enter now on privateproperty.co.za. Man, I love these taps, Khabi. Thank you so much for providing us with these beautiful taps. They're absolutely amazing. Thanks, Lisa, for choosing Grower. This is a K7, one of our most famous taps that we're selling. It has a 360 degree turn around. You can use this for your washing your pots, for cleaning all your vegetables in the kitchen. Most of the people take taps for granted in their kitchen. They're the most used in the house. You use them for drinking water in your kitchen, you use them for cooking. So we do have water saving features that are here just to make sure that we play our part in the sustainability of the world. And remember with our motto, it's maximum enjoyment with less consumption. We definitely have the right choice that fits our kitchen perfectly with both this tap and that tap. Yes, we do have a wide variety of tabs within our ranges just to make sure that they match your look and the feeling that you're looking for. We've got a C spout, L spout, also with a pull out to make it easy for you to work in your kitchen. So our tabs are also reliable. Remember, this is where everybody's going to see and then they need to be aesthetically pleasing for your guests and everyone. So this is gonna be your pride. Whoever's gonna win this, gonna enjoy this kitchen. Well, I absolutely love this tap and whoever gets to win this beautiful house will absolutely love it as well. I can't wait for you to use it. Welcome to the Habitat Tour Guide. Fasten your seat belts as we take you on a tour. It's about to be an adventure. Welcome to the kitchen. As you can see, we've got JP working on the skirtings. He's just finished the Beautiful shelves that you can see all around. If you want to take a hike, just join Dennis on the ladder. Mm. He's painted it. <laughs> and you can go straight to the top. Yes. And as you can see here, we've got lighting for days by Stephen. Oh, <laughs> chandelier, chandelier. I'm interested we shouldn't do chandeliers, but I said shut the front door, Amanda. <laughs> yeah, we were checking mm. the Instagram and we saw Stephen Pickers. Sure. And Wow. It was, I mean, it's amazing. His work is just amazing. Recycled bottles that these guys, the Gareza guys, find on the streets, work that, and actually one at a time, put it up there. And build this amazing mm. chandelier which I we mean, have. Razzle dazzle yeah. in yeah, that we, kitchen. We couldn't say no. <laughs> <laughs> so all we've got left to do is bring in our Grundig products, and when those fridges come in, everyone will be saying, what, what the, the fridge? <laughs> What the fridge and shut the front door indeed. Those kitchens are going to look amazing and one of them could be yours. To enter the Winner Home Grand Prize competition, visit privateproperty.co.za and vote for your favorite design duo. It's literally that easy. You could win your choice of one of the three decorated homes at the Eye of Africa Golf and Residential Estate with luxurious finishes by Plascon and Caesarstone, as well as those all-important kitchen appliances by Grundig. Remember that by entering the grand prize competition, you also automatically put yourself in the running to win our bi-weekly prize giveaway. The latest prize was a Grower Eurocube Sink Mixer Professional, valued at over 12,000 Rand. And the lucky winner of that prize is... Klesal Apollos from Kensington, Cape Town, who voted for Team House and Leisure. Congratulations! This means that we have a new bi-weekly prize to give away. And in keeping with the kitchen theme, it's the amazing black glass door combi fridge from Grundig. It's the same model as Team VC have selected for their kitchen, valued at 899. So visit privateproperty.co.za and enter right now. Listen, after the break, we bring you all the excitement and the fun from the Heritage Day Festival at the Eye of Africa Golf and Residential Estate. Plus, all those kitchens get to be revealed. Stay right where you are. Partnership with Winner Home. The best stone is Caesar Stone. Because if it doesn't improve people's lives, it isn't Plascon. 
Atlascon, designed for life. Welcome back to Winner Home on Afternoon Express. And thanks so much for all the tweets that are coming through. Hashtag Winner Home. I'm loving reading them all. It's crunch time for the kitchen challenge, or should I say crush time? And that's for our design duos too. The word that is top of mind for me is trouble, because that's exactly what they're facing as their deadline fast approaches. They better get a move on. Chop, chop. It's almost deadline and we're fanning the wall, trying to make it dry. He thinks it's making a difference, but I know that deep down that Simanj has to dry, but we're really trying our best. Come, 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 come! What are you two doing? Watching paint dry or finishing off a kitchen? Almost done. We just need that to dry and then they're gonna paint that and then it's done. I don't know if it's almost done. It should be done by now. Time is running out, you two. Fridges aren't in, cupboard doors aren't on. You guys are nowhere near done. Oh, heavens. <laughs> Will they be done on time? I'm not too sure. Guys. Okay, we're going to take for long. Go, 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 go. Yeah, we're trying to make sure that everything is in order. And when he comes to the room, that's when we start panicking before the judges. Danilo scares me more than the judges, like honestly speaking. Mpo, the deadline is in sight. There's so much still to be done, yet you're just wiping tables. It's better to kill two birds with one stone, Danilo. As long as it's Caesar Stone, I'm happy. <laughs> So, Seho, what still needs to be done here? Well, Danilo, all we have to do is install the extractor, clean up and style, and then we should be done. All appliances will need to be installed, cupboard doors are being installed, there's a guy drilling here still. Cleaning is the least of your worries. Well, we should have done it at the halfway mark, but stuff happens and we're here now. So, we're going to push through what we need to push through and make sure we're done on time. I'm expecting a finished kitchen from you too. Otherwise, whatever's here is going to be judged on, alright? Get back to it. Sure. Janela's about to come in. A beer's up on the ladder. Still trying sure. to do touch ups. A beer with the grey. I told you, it's like brushing your hair with the grey. Wow, great job. Hello, Brad. How's it, Janela? How you doing? Hey! Listen, guys, how's it going? The deadline is fast approaching. It is. We're getting there. We've still got some painting to do, carpenter work. But the Caesar's turn is in. It's looking amazing. The chandelier's up. Incredible. I mean, you can't fault this. The feedback from the previous challenge had to do with the minor details in your space. Lots of great ideas, but what's going to win you the challenge is making sure that those details are ironed out. And I'm seeing some little details need to be finished up now. Are those going to be done in time? Which details? Well, what is going on up there? Sure. The carpenters need to come in, fix up the top there, put in the shelves, put in our cornices still, so it's a bit of woodwork that still needs to happen. All right, guys, I want to see a finished product that is neat and clean because you guys have some great design ideas, but the finish is, is where you guys fall short. Yo, let's make it happen, Nabia, what do you think? That's right! As the saying goes, if you can't stand the heat, get out of the kitchen. In this case, cranking up the heat got everyone into the kitchen to try and ensure the results are not a flop. The kitchen challenge was the toughest yet in the build-up to deadline for our design contestants. But it's five o'clock, time is up, and here they come. We're running out of our unit and everything is done and we're quite confident about how everything turned out. Turned out, yes, and I think the judges will be impressed. As they enter the final weeks of the competition, our design duos have a cash budget that is dwindling, and they still have two large spaces left to decorate. Thanks to the 20,000 Rand cash injection they all received at the start of this challenge, Team Habitat spent 66,000 Rand on their kitchen, which leaves them with 68,000 Rand left. Team VC spent a similar 63,000 Rand on their kitchen and have 64,000 Rand of the cash budget remaining. Team House and Leisure may have only spent 57,000 Rand, but even so, are left with merely 48,000 Rand. Yikes, you two. As we near the pointy end of the competition, Tsepo and Manele will have to work extra carefully with their remaining cash budget and stretch their rands and cents to cover their final designs. However, this certainly hasn't diminished their considered design approach in the kitchen. With a tighter budget than their competitors, Team House and Leisure drew on their strengths to maximize the design of their kitchen, creating a space that is simple and very practical. 
The kitchen looks impeccable. It's almost like it's been designed for a minimalist artist. That is true, Danilo. We really considered everything from the wall colors to the lights and also just the finishes, especially since it's combined with the kitchen and the lounge area. Speaking of minimalism, we try to bring that whole minimalistic idea from the spare room to the master bedroom into the kitchen. And since we haven't started planning our lounge, we don't want whatever we do in that lounge to compete with what's gonna be in the kitchen. And we believe less is more. True, less is more when it comes to aesthetics, but maybe not when it comes to adding value to the home. What fixed objects have you inserted into your kitchen to add value here? Um, first of all, it's our scissor stone. We've got so much scissor stone here, and I think that instantly adds the value to the kitchen. And our Balcotex flooring, which is vinyl, I think that instantly as well adds value to the kitchen. And lastly, our Grindic appliances, which are German-made, so that really is everything. From the feedback from the previous challenges, what are you trying to adjust in your kitchen to make those judges really make notice? Like we minimized our color and another thing, our window dressing. We did see that in a spare room, they did really appreciate the whole idea of matching the blind to the wall color. So we tried to bring that element into the kitchen as well. What I also noticed that was a great feature is that you've played with products like your Caesar stone behind you. That is true. Um, we wanted our drainage grooves and that's what we got here. And we're trying to eliminate the idea of having plate rails which can become too cluttered, but you can just place your dishes here and it drains. Very, very nice idea, you two. Well done on that. Who is the person you'd imagine living in this home and cooking in this very kitchen? It is a couple, first of all, because with everything we designed, we we're considering each other. And I think that balance helps a couple to like to show different personalities and also the fact that we actually considered every detail and invested in quality like even our sinks and everything like we really went for the best well i hope the judges see that quality and perhaps we'll get another challenge win let's do like marie antoinette and eat cake <laughs> and danilo a little birdie told us that carrot cake is your favorite indeed it is he was the little bit i'm not the judge though <laughs> <laughs> Team House and Leisure are hoping for sweet success, but we'd love to hear your thoughts and comments on those completed kitchens. Use the hashtag WinnerHome to join the kitchen conversation. After the break, the other kitchens are revealed. Back with your favorite interior design reality competition, Winner Home on SABC3. Now, every cook knows there are some classic flavor combinations that just work. Lamb and rosemary come to mind, blue cheese and pear, or perhaps chocolate and coffee. For Team VC, however, they know that classic color combinations can be used in a modern design that is precisely what they've done in their kitchen. Continuing their monochromatic palette, Team VC's Modern Kitchen draws on both Mpo and Lesejo's design experience with a distinct urban edge. Welcome to our kitchen, Danilo. You guys have done an amazing job. I love this monochromatic feel that you've got going on here. Thank you. How do you feel? Well, we're just glad we're done. Um, it's been a long road, mm -hmm. a long journey, and we're just glad that we're done, and now it's time to enjoy our kitchen. Well, a good chef is able to take a simple chicken and describe it to sounds, oh, so delicious. But so is a good designer. They're able to take a kitchen and describe it beautifully. So what have you guys tried to create in this space? Well, we've tailored our space to our client who is a bachelor. And bachelors, although they're not in the kitchen as regularly, we still want to supply him with what he needs when he's cooking. If you look at the floating shelves, we continued them with the floating cupboard here. And we added like a grocery cabinet next to the fridge. Uh, the good part about this kitchen is that we have dynamic, we use dynamic space living. For instance, if maybe you're chopping your onions, you can wash them here and then take all the garbages and throw them inside your, 
your bed. So there's no need for you to move around looking for things where they are not supposed to be. And we've also included um, LEDs underneath our floating cabinet. And this, if you switch off all your lights and leave those on, it turns this house into a major party. Love it. <laughs> I want to see these. So underneath here is where these LEDs are placed, right? Yeah. These are so cool. And they even change color underneath here. Oh, but then what's, what's going on with these things here? Like this stuff, dudes. Eh? Well, unfortunately for us, um, because it's a room by room challenge, the contractor would only agree to put in skirting once the entire room is done. Okay. And because we have an open plan, this might have to wait for the next challenge. Okay, so just a placeholder for now, it's not a train smash. Yeah. Not a train smash, it will be fixed within the next challenge. Great, and this little guy over here? So that one there, you know, cupboards are not made from magic. We need to have that thing in order to balance it on it until it's dry. Forever? Not no. forever. Just for meanwhile. Okay, so this just was bad timing from you guys, bad planning. Yeah. Okay. When Dan comes into the kitchen and, or maybe in any room and gives us a critique, it's more of a, he wants it to be perfect because if we've been doing this for quite some few weeks now and him pointing out everything, it's like, guys, you need to pull up your socks. And when he comes to the room, that's when we start panicking before the judges. Danilo scares me more than the judges, like honestly speaking. We've also decided to put in a beautiful chalkboard so you can always note down what you want to eat. Lovely, takeaway on Fridays. I'm excited, yeah. that sounds good. Yeah, so we have tried to think of all the details, but unfortunately we are human and some of the details slip through the cracks. All right, well let's hope that the judges don't see most of those. They are on their way. Good luck to both of you. Let's hope we get another challenge win, second in a row. Thank, Thank you. you cool guys, ciao. The devil is in the details, and that's precisely what can make or break a kitchen. Over the past few challenges, Team Habitat have clearly shown that they are learning and growing by paying attention to the details. So, could this kitchen be their masterpiece? Go big or go bold has been Team Habitat's mantra throughout the competition. And in their kitchen, this reveals itself in the way they have maximized space and lighting. Why, hello, Team Habitat. Hi, <laughs> welcome to the kitchen. Yeah. We've yes. prepared some milkshakes and eclairs. You delivered on your promise. Yes, I we like have it. to make sure the milkshake brings Danilo to the yard. <laughs> <laughs> and I love it because you put eclair back in eclectic. Mm. Well, we thought, let's go big, bold, and do a kitchen for a family size. So what are your favorite elements in the space? And what are you hoping the judges will notice as they walk in here? Well, definitely the judges as they walk in can't miss this T-junction. Yeah, the chandelier is very special. It's made from recycled glass. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, so it's, and it's just... an incredible showstopper for the kitchen. And it complements the Caesar stone. Absolutely. It yeah. looks like Caesar stone went up into pieces and just hung there <laughs> and dazzled. As you can see, we've got a seating of four, which can be extended to six. For a king-size family, a king, a queen, mm. and a baby and bars. Yes, mm. prince and princess. That's right. So we've <laughs> yes. got some faux leather chairs so you can sit there and nibble or just chit-chat. Mm. And we've got cabinets for days. I mean, from up there to down there, there's just cabinets for your pots, your pans, and any other thing mm. you might want to store. Yes. And the cabinets, it's quite a nice contrast between the, the white and the dark wood. Yes. Katlejo is obviously going to be looking at colour, as you guys know, and you've mentioned a bit of it now. Um, how have you tried to please her with the colours in the space? Well, our choice of colour, we actually went for a dusty baby pink undertone. Mm. Because it's called Ivory Pillar, and it's a, almost like a rose quartz colour that complements the chandelier, the Caesar stone, mm. and apparently it's supposed to get your appetite going. So <laughs> we hope it does get her appetite going. Yeah. <laughs> she might be in our fridge. Well, as you guys know, a kitchen needs to be both practical and aesthetically pleasing. And so, with all the cabinetry, you guys have thought very wisely about how to make the space more practical with the ladder. Absolutely. And it's such a great addition. So, can you, can I, oh. Come on, girl, put in some elbow grease. <laughs> we might need some oil. It's not going to break. Oh. And it won't come down from the ceiling. I promise you that. Oh, heavens. OK. That's just... right. You just might need a king or a queen to help you trolley it along. Uh -huh. The stairs are nice and sturdy. It's a nice color. And you just open up the cupboard and Absolutely. get a plate. Absolutely. You get a plate. <laughs> yes, you can throw it down to us at the bottom. Well, I feel like I'm on the stairway towards heaven. So congratulations, you two. Let's hope the judges don't try and move it, because it looks good. Don't yeah, it works good. But by the time the judges come, I will have put some oil or butter from the front. <laughs> okay. I'm going to steal my milkshake. Steal an eclair and I'm out of here. The judges are on their way. Honey. Cheers, you too. Bye. 
The three kitchens could not be more different from one another, and the judges might end up giving different reviews. Why not give yours on social media using the hashtag WinnerHome? The more sauce, the better. But all work and no play does not make for happy design duos. The Eye of Africa Heritage Day Festival over the recent long weekend was the perfect way to relax and give our loyal viewers the opportunity to meet the design duos, who are very proud to show off their work in open house viewings of the three WinnerHome home units. Were they as critical as our judges? Let's find out. It is a glorious day at the Eye of Africa Golf and Residential Estate as we celebrate Heritage Day. Today they're hosting their Heritage Festival. Loads of stores for the family and friends, plus the Winter Home homes are open to view. And so many people celebrate Heritage in different ways. My favorite is through um, food. I have Africa Golf and Residential Estate. are extremely excited to be hosting our very first Heritage Day Festival. And we are just blown away by the amazing outcome, not only by the support from the residents, but inviting friends, family, and then the nearby community to get involved in supporting our local vendors, which are serving some amazing food, drinks, and awesome products here today. So yeah, we couldn't be happier, and we look forward to hosting many more events like this. The best part is going around having a taste of all the different flavors and chows and uh, the guys have been really friendly coming around giving some tasters and we're having a good time with the children, yeah. South Africa is really, really such a good place because uh, there's so many different cultures and uh, just the, the demographics here is really amazing seeing different people just coming out here in their numbers and families and stuff and yeah, we really just dig, dig the, the vibe that's here, check the chias as, as one says. <laughs> Afternoon Express's resident chef, Clem Pedro, dazzled the crowd with his delicious cooking demonstration and the attendees were welcome to have a look inside the Winner Home units. SABC3 took the opportunity to invite our South African progressive viewers to the Eye of Africa to come and experience the greatest prize on South African television. So please enter to stand a chance to win. Okay, you sing it on TV and sing it live, it gives different perspective, you know. And it's more lovely seeing it live than on TV because actually you can see the hard work that went into and everything and that they did and the details as well, you know. Uh, what really stood out for me must be the wallpapers on each room. Um, very dynamic, also adds a little bit of space. Uh, really looks good. Adds a focal point to, to the rooms. I wouldn't put so much grass in, in the bedrooms and things like that. I think grass needs to be outside, it shouldn't be inside. Mmm, seems everyone is a critic, but thankfully it's up to the judges. Before they have their say, we're going to get some property advice on the hottest residential estates in KwaZulu-Natal. That's coming up after the break. Because if it doesn't improve people's lives, it isn't Plascon. Plascon. Designed for life. Search for a home on any device, anytime, anywhere. Private property, a home for everyone. Welcome back to Win a Home on Afternoon Express, exclusively on SABC3. Now, as you know, Private Property has teamed up with Afternoon Express to provide you with advice on the different aspects of property on estates. Today, we have in the loft with us Carol Reynolds, North Durban Area Principal for Pam Golding Properties, who is going to chat to us about the property and estate market in our home province of KwaZulu-Natal. Welcome to the loft. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Good to be here. So, Carol, how does one like you get involved in the sort of world of property? property. I was born into a property family. My father's a conveyancer. My mom's owned the Pam Golding franchise for 20 years in the Midlands. Sure. My sister co-owns it with her. My brother's in construction. My grandfather was a developer. And I did law and decided that I needed something a little bit more vibrant in my life. So and you tried to run away and then the cord <laughs> was too close and it kind of pulled you back and in. That's it. I thought I've either got to be an estate <laughs> agent or a lawyer. <laughs> so let me do property because I love sure. everything about property. I love renovating, decorating, investing in it. Stunning. It's my passion. Yeah. What's so cool about your family is that you're so diverse in the field of property. So yes. what exactly is going on in the markets <laughs> in Durban when it comes to property? 
You know, 2017 has been an interesting year for South Africa and there's been a lot of negative sentiments. But ironically, people tend to gravitate back towards a bricks and mortar, more solid investment mm. class. So actually, the residential property market, particularly in Natal, is, is being really resilient. It's showing extreme resilience. We've had growth of 9% year on year in Amschlange, which is 4% above the national average. My little Durban North Amschlange um, franchise has done better this year than last year. So I think sometimes you've got to remove yourself from the noise and the sentiment and actually yeah. focus on the stats. And you'll see that actually the residential property market's doing exceptionally well. And speaking of those stats, I mean, we've been mentioning over the last couple of weeks that estates are a growing trend when it comes to property. Everyone's looking to be part of an estate. So what are some of the hottest estates that are happening in, in KZ at the moment that are around? Well, just north of Belito in a little place called Tinley Manor is Palm Lakes very popular with young families because you can get a three to four bedroomed home there for three million rand. What? So it's really affordable and the lakes in the estate, lots of community centers, ideal for children. So that's a popular one. Then moving slightly further south into the heart of Belito is Zimbiti. Zimbiti's done very well over the years. Beautiful modern contemporary mm. architecture. It's got an 18 hole golf course and equestrian center. So also very popular with families. Sure. And then moving slightly further south to Zimbali, which is on the cusp of Belito, probably the most well-known security estate in KwaZulu-Natal. It's got Balinesian architecture, mm. very established. It's got a lot of coastal forest, yeah, which creates privacy. Weren't they also like named as like the second just below um, an estate in sort of Cape Town? Yes, it's like one of, yes. one of the key Voted estates. Number, number two in, in the, the country. In the country, wow. yeah, Zimbali. Stunning. And prices, they are higher. So your entry level is about 6 million up to over 20 million for a freestanding home. But beautiful and, and private and secure. And obviously you've got yeah. the golf course and the Fairmont Hotel. Awesome. So lots happening in that estate. And then moving inland to the Hillcrest area is Cotswold Downs. It's more of a rural sort of country estate, also on an 18-hole golf course. Beautiful architecture. I'd describe it probably as contemporary farm style. You've got exposed trusses, mm. grey slate roofs. So it's quite classic and also more affordable. Entry level there is 4 million. You can buy a beautiful home for between 4 and 10 million. So also a lovely estate. Excuse my appropriation when it comes to these things, but Durbanites, you know, like quite chilled people, and they, they've got lots of really cool, uh, you know, like activities to, to engage in just on the, yes. in their daily lifestyle. Yes, we do. So what exactly do Durbanites look for and the rest of the country look for when it comes to an estate? Because all of that's already at your fingertips, you know, beaches 100%. and lifestyle. I mean, we really are spoilt in Natal. We've got the best climate, the most user-friendly sea, a beautiful coastline. But first and foremost, people are seeking security. Mm. And then once you've got security, they look at the features and the benefits. They want their children to grow up in an environment where they can get their bicycles and go and visit their friends, go and play a little bit of golf on the driving ranges. Um, so I think it's just that peace of mind of being within a gated community and having that security, which is absolutely paramount at the moment in the market. And what's happened to KZN, it's become a hotspot for Johannesburg commuters. So there's a mass immigration of Joburg buyers coming down, wanting their families to grow up in these beautiful coastal estates, five minutes from the airport. The convenience and the lifestyle offering can't be beaten. There's a reason Durban has been voted best place to live in South Africa for the last three years. Has it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh my gosh. The Mercer Index is rated at the best mm. lifestyle city in the country. So ahead of oh. Cape Town, ahead of Joburg, you know, at the end of the day, you can't beat a beautiful climate. Yeah. Is that going to be expected to grow into the future? I mean, are we going to see these trends kind of moving forward? Is the property market going to continue to increase or is it starting to reach that cap where it's now, you know, too many people there so it's going to start declining? No, not at all. The beauty of Natal is there's lots of sugarcane land and it's slowly being developed. The Sabaya precinct, which is between Amschlange and Amschloti, is incredibly popular at the moment. It's a talking point. It's literally three minutes away from the airport. So I predict that KwaZulu-Natal is going to grow over the next 10 years. That's why I'm there. I think it's a place to be. Mm. It's as though it's finally been discovered. Um, Schlange is attracting um, foreign investors for the first time in the, in, in the last two years. I'm suddenly fe seeing a lot of Dubai um, people investing in our property market. So it's very exciting times. It's a very buoyant market and we're very blessed. Sure because not a lot's buoyant at the moment. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So Carol, yeah. thank you so much. I don't want to take care of this conversation. I want to go and buy a property <laughs> yeah, in Durban absolutely, somewhere. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I'll, I'll show you which one. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. So listen, there you guys have it. The lowdown on what's happening in the property market in KZN. And if you have not done so already, be sure to enter the Winner Home Grand Prize Competition on private property to stand a chance to win a multi-million rand home on the Eye of Africa Golf and Residential Estate. All you have to do is log on to privateproperty.co.za and answer a very easy question. 
It's literally as simple as that. Now, after the break on the show, the judges come feast their eyes on those kitchens. Welcome back to Win a Home on Afternoon Express. Now, all our design duos are hungry for a win in this challenge, and that boils down to impressing our judges who might just stir things up when assessing the kitchens. It's like Arnold Schwarzenegger. <laughs> Every time the judges arrive, it's... Uh... What? We will be back. <laughs> <laughs> it's always like that. It's like, I just want to get out of there, mm. let them judge. It's judgment day. But you know when you've done your best, it's... Yeah, you don't want to be around. Our judges are interior designer Donald Mumalo, Plascon's Katlejo Konlo, and guest judge renowned architect Jonathan Anstey, adjudicator of Caesar Stone's prestigious annual student designer competition. I'm Jonathan Anstey. I'm a professional architect and a managing director of Anstey Architects. I came up with the classification that there's two parts to a kitchen. First of all, there's the purely functional, and then, of course, is the character. And with this being a design competition, there's obviously an emphasis in looking at how the designers have been able to deal with the fundamentals of kitchen design. From a designer, what we expect is take it beyond simply just the practical. I mean, to look at those aspects of design which move into how does it create atmosphere, how does it create an environment in which you enjoy being. I am a bit nervous since we are being judged by architects this time around. So it really is about function for them and seamless design, so it might be a problem or not. The judges begin their tour of the kitchens in Team Habitat space, which was inspired by the whimsy and stature of giraffes. I think they're going to love it when you stand back and you look at the kitchen. You can't deny that this is a winner. My biggest worry is Donald and Katleha, I hope they don't slap that ladder <laughs> <laughs> like Danilo did, because yes. it's not going to be a smooth transaction. I got so excited when we walked in here and I saw the chandelier. I was like, wow, look at the artistry involved in it, the craft. And I wanted to see more of that throughout the kitchen, to be quite honest. I, I looked at the slabs and I started to see kind of the, the organic nature of working through the slabs. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. And I understand the design of them using quite a neutral element to offset those slabs. Yeah. But then if I look globally, I start to get disappointed that maybe some of the decisions are a bit pedestrian after that. Donald? A little too plain for me. I like the fact that they've used their space quite wisely. I think because you've got such high ceilings, mm -hmm. they've chosen to go higher with the cupboards. And by introducing the ladder, you're able to reach those top covers in order to reach those delicious ingredients for you to make that food. OK, so I'm going to try and push it, see what happens. Ooh. OK, no need for words there. I think the execution of it isn't as, as great as I would have loved it to be. This thing is just not being solid at all. But guys, honestly, um, when I walked in, I was a bit sad because I feel like their personality from the other episodes is not coming through at all. On a positive note, though, I feel they've created a sense of space in the kitchen. Um, however, I am concerned about the proportions between the kitchen and the living area. How they're going to execute that, I'm not so sure. The space is, is well considered. It certainly consumes a lot of the area of the room, but it defines both dining and preparation. I like the fact that they've created a dining table out of Caesar stone and it's a part of the kitchen but also part of the lounge. I love the idea of this ladder. However, it's quite clunky. The execution is not that well thought out. It's quite clunky. Even the way they've painted it, they didn't prepare the wood properly. So it didn't, it just let down, it, it lets down the, the kitchen. Designed by Team VC, the next kitchen to be judged is a bold representation of the modern, urban African style of their fictional client. I hope <laughs> all goes well. Yeah. Uh, what can I think happen? it's going to go well with our guest judge being an architect. We did like an architectural kitchen, honestly speaking. Guys, I feel that this is really fresh. I love 
um, the consistency of design, they've been true to who they are, and it makes sense. I mean, if you look at the other rooms and you look in this space, it makes sense. However, I'm not so sure about the use of kitchen and bathrooms on this wall. I think the idea is great, using Tribeca. However, I would have used chalkboard paint because it's more practical, you can clean it over and over again. This kitchen is definitely not for me, who cooks five colors every Sunday. It definitely is Cape Town lifestyle living vegan, which makes sense because they are designing for that single guy, the bachelor. I certainly take your point on that five colors Sunday. But the wonderful thing about this particular kitchen, I truly love the simplicity. Mm. The designers have actually worked with quite a neutral palette, set off that black and white, you're getting a very graphic response. I like the fact that this kitchen just screams quality. For me, the appliances are great. I think those are quality appliances. Considering that the kitchen is one of the most expensive rooms to do in any home, I like the fact that the stone is so beautiful, so simple, but it's got such personality in it. It literally looks like cement. And with the play of the black and white, a grey countertop is just perfect for me. And in the strongness of the black and white, I just love that there's colour at the bottom. We're just using light. That's great for lighting design. I didn't even notice the lights until Donald said, have a look. They feel like those low down, those drop suspended cars with the lighting underneath. I felt it cheap in the space. I didn't I don't I don't like that execution. Black and white is really my favorite color combination any day. And the way that this kitchen has been put together so seamlessly, it looks very professional, it's well designed. I love it. The menu board behind the stove really brought out a sense of the team's personality. It was a matter of walking into somebody's space in which they weren't shy to actually demonstrate how you would use the space. My least favorite aspect of this room, I'm not a fan of some of the accessories. I think some of the metallic accessories, like the gold pots, did seem inexpensive to me because the kitchen is just so crisp and clean and so high end. They were just a miss for me. Prepare any meal in that space and suddenly all of that minimalism will be cluttered and all of that graphic sensibility will be overshadowed. That's the downside of minimalism. Finally, the judges pay a visit to Team House and Lesher's Kitchen, where the overall feel is intended as minimalist, welcoming and practical. What I think the judges will appreciate the most about our kitchen is the high level of functionality. We really, really considered like that aspect of the kitchen. It might, to some extent, appear a bit too simple. Well, Guys, I think this is a practical kitchen. Everything is in its place, and I think it works really well. You've got a, a backsplash on the stove, you've got a kick plate so your covers don't get dirty or damaged at the bottom. I like the fact that the, the sink is the right proportion. You can actually fit a plate in there. Uh, there are plug points everywhere in case you need some extra appliances. The broom cupboard is nicely sized, so you can do a lot with this kitchen. The only thing is that it feels a little bit cold and undesigned, almost what you would do in a corporate project. And this is a home. The nicest thing about this kitchen is the cake. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, really. I came into this kitchen and there was such a high standard that was set and the expectations were quite high. It's definitely obvious that you can prepare a beautiful meal in here and there's enough space for each one of the activities. Where I feel it fails to me is that it, it doesn't create a sense of mood. I, I don't get excited about this kitchen. I think they've re really tried hard with maybe a couple of contrasts. They played with the, the neutrality of the grey and then the warmth of the wood. But it, in its execution, it almost feels like a 1970s restoration project where half the kitchen is in the kind of new and the other still needs to get there. I love boldness, I don't think this one's working. This kitchen for me, and I'm just reinforcing what you said, Jonathan, feels as though you bought those old suburban homes that you're trying to refurbish. It feels almost bipolar, but as Donald said, it is a very practical kitchen. The space is just right. The light is incredible. House and Leisure's kitchen is the most practical kitchen. They've dealt with each and every element of what you need to 
facilitate in the kitchen exceptionally well. My impression of this kitchen is that it leaves me with no impression and that's a problem. It meets all the standards of what a kitchen should be. Huge plus for them because I can see myself creating a beautiful meal in this kitchen. However, it's not inspiring and we are looking for an inspirational project. The great news is that they've used the neutral of the year, Amadeus, which is a gorgeous colour. However, the execution, the way they've combined the dark um, wood and the dark greys, it really doesn't work that beautifully in this space. Um, so I wouldn't have recommended it, although it's a stunning, stunning colour. I'm left feeling very neutral about their kitchen, and that's disappointing knowing that these kitchens are not put together by kitchens or us, but, but designers have been involved in them and I want to see their personalities. I, I can't see them in their presentations. Team House and Leisure, I've loved your trail thus far. I just think that closer to the edge, we need more energy and we need you to just deliver on inspiration and true, true design. Sure, the judges' commentary was definitely a mixed masala of positive and negative feedback from different perspectives. However, they must choose a winner for this challenge. So, which kitchen satisfied their appetite for great design? Contestants, welcome back. Congratulations on completing your kitchens. Each and every kitchen looked so fantastic, we just wanted to eat them up. The judges had a very difficult decision to make this time round, so I'll start with feedback for you, Team VC. Black and white will never go out of fashion. But would a family really want to eat dinner in a kitchen that kind of looks like a nightclub? Ooh, Danilo. No, Danilo, uh, we don't mind. I, I don't mind. He, it doesn't she look might. like a nightclub. It doesn't look like a nightclub. It looks like a nice well, house I don't party. Know, I don't know. Not a nightclub. I don't know which nightclubs Danilo goes to, but it's fine. So. And our client is a bachelor. Yeah, His so. life is a party. Team House and Leisure. Your kitchen was simple, yet oh so elegant. Your minimalist design might be great for a spec home, but did you really push the boundaries of design or just play it safe? I'm a bit worried that that's going to work against us now, since we are about to get our results. <laughs> and they thought our kitchen looks back, which is sad. Team Habitat, your kitchen really made a statement. You made some really good and bold design choices, but were those design elements really practical? It's nice to hear that the judges like our personality, our aesthetic, and they want to see more of that. So that's exciting. And encouraging. Because when we started off, it was a lot of, whoa, 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 is this the jungle? Is this the Amazon? Is this the Kruger <laughs> National Park? And this is guys, Africa. This is Africa. Africa. And also with our aesthetic, we are loud. We are very bold. But it's also, are you going to hire young designers to do the same thing that you could get next door? Mm. I don't think so. Overall, the judges said that you should be very proud of your decisions in your kitchens. Great work, and although there was some harsh feedback, this will only grow you as designers in the future. There can only be one winner, and that design team that walks away with an extra 3,000 Rand for their next design challenge is... Team VC. I'm quite happy that we've taken two challenges now. Uh, so other teams, they should just take us serious now. I think it's, it's about time that we start winning. I like the look of the kitchen. I... Nice. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> Nothing more shall be said after that. What does Naomi do when she doesn't want to answer a question? <laughs> <laughs> so when they announced the winner wasn't us, I just love it. Yeah. We hope that the curse of the double challenge win doesn't fall on us. Yeah. So hopefully we can get a third win. I think we need a third win. I think we need all the wins, eh? A fourth win too. Yeah. And then and the we, final and win. The final win. It'll be nice. Yeah. Winner Home has been such a roller coaster ride for our design duos thus far, and there are only two challenges left to complete their houses. Luckily for you and I, we are bringing you a double dose of Winner Home next week on Thursday, the 12th of October. And Friday, the 13th of October, you'll get the Garden Challenge back to back. So, can our design duos blossom into landscape designers, or will they just wilt in the attempt to put fun back in functional outdoor spaces? Join me again next week for more of Winner Homes Double Dose on Thursday and Friday. Good night, and have a great rest of your week. 
search for a home on any device, anytime, anywhere. Private property, a home for everyone. Express, made with love by Clover. Another feel-good production.